everyone, I'm Alexa Dunn and today I want to have a discussion. I want to address some concerns, some fears, some wild rumors that have definitely been going around. You may have noticed some big shifts happening lately, including imprints closing, YA imprints closing. And I'm seeing just a lot of worried discussion on forums like Reddit, on Twitter, and people are asking, is YA dying? Is YA over? Am I doomed if I'm writing YA? So I wanted to kind of talk about some of it and explain some of what's going on and both alleviate some concerns, but honestly, I'm not going to gaslight you. And if you hear people go, no, everything's fine, YA is not dying, you have no reason to be concerned. They are lying to you. Maybe they're lying to themselves Two, the reality is the industry is shifting. YA has been saturated for a while. And what that means is too many books being published, they're not selling enough, and the category has needed to pull back for some time. The breaks have been applied. And that's the thing, this has been going on for years. The writing has been on the wall. And industry insiders, it sounds so snobby, but when you're on kind of the other side, you have an agent, you have a book deal, you start to see things. I've been seeing things for many, many years. And in fact, if you are a long time watcher of the channel or, or if you follow me on Reddit, I've been screaming the doom for a couple of years on Reddit in terms of just trying to give people sound advice. I've been doing it on this channel as well. It's why I've led discussions on the decimation of the mid-list, dead genres, how to pivot it from setbacks. Even my video on querying during the time of COVID, and we are going to talk about COVID because I think a lot of people also have been like, this is because of COVID. No, <laughs> COVID, COVID just hastened some things that were already happening. So let's talk about the recent imprint shutterings. Two uh, major, meaning two big five YA imprints closed a couple of weeks ago. One was Jimmy Patterson, really the side of Jimmy books that did original YA. His side that still publishes his books is still there. And the an imprint, which is the name of the imprint, which was an imprint of Macmillan. Uh, Jimmy was Hachette, so both big five. This, of course, is devastating for the authors involved, though I can reassure you, all of the authors that had contracted books are still being published, but their books have been moved to other imprints at the publishers. And in both cases, this is, this is where, I mean, it sucks across the board. They lost their editors. The editors were let go. This means f there are fewer editors. Editors lost their jobs. And yeah, it's very stressful for the authors because they are then inherited by another editor at a different imprint. They join a different list. They don't know what's going on. It is very, very scary. And kind of the concern is real but they are being published. But of course this means the imprints are gone, which means the editors are gone, and those publishing slots are gone. So yes, this does mean at both Hachette and Macmillan, flat out, there's going to be less YA being published. Similar but different, also we're talking about Simon and & Schuster. So Simon & Schuster underwent a reorganization much earlier in the year. It was in the spring. It happened to coincide with COVID, but it had been planned before COVID. And in that case, their YA imprint, Simon Pulse, was closed, but they didn't fire all the editors. They moved the editors around to other imprints at Simon & Schuster and all the books. So that's like a similar-ish thing. It does mean that there will be less YA acquired at Simon and Schuster because Simon Pulse was a major YA imprint and it's gone, but the editors still exist. They're just on different staffs. They joined different imprints and will be adjusting lists accordingly going forward. So yes, this means three of the big five have shuttered major YA imprints, which means fewer YA acquisitions. But as I mentioned, this has been coming for a long time. So with COVID, as I mentioned, with Simon & Schuster, it had nothing to do with COVID. Simon & Schuster has been preparing itself for sale for a while. They are looking for someone to buy them. They're currently owned by Viacom and Viacom wants to get rid of their books division, basically. Jimmy and imprint at Macmillan. 
I suspect, but here's the thing, this is all speculation. All we have is speculation because the people who actually worked at those imprints aren't going to be spilling that tea on the real reasons that those imprints went away. So all we have is speculation. And I've seen both good speculation and poor speculation in the, the, both of these situations. It's very likely shutting those imprints had been maybe not directly planned, but had been a possibility for a while. And yes, COVID hastened decisions. COVID hastened things happening because yes, everyone has definitely taken a hit with COVID-19. But that's the thing about the YA landscape. So now let's talk about the things that have been going on for a while, the writing that has been on the wall. So first of all, YA is a very young category. I mean, we kind of talked about this before. It didn't exist when I was a kid. Children's literature always exists, but YA as a marketing category, because we're always remember it as a, a marketing category, came about and started booming in the mid to late 2000s. So it's a very, very young category. At best, it's 15 to 17 years old. If you think about kind of uh, Cassie Clare publishing, I think it was 2003. But really, I would think about Twilight, which I think it was uh, 2007, 2008, and The Hunger Games around the same time. So it's a category that's about 12 to 15 years old. And we started reaching the natural saturation point of a brand new sexy booming books category that bought a lot of books because a lot of people were buying them. So excite much books. We started gradually reaching that saturation point five to six years ago. The way landscape of purchasing, I mean, 2008 to 2012 is probably like the height of the boom. They were just buying books left, right, and center. That's when a ton of writers got their foot in the door. That's when a ton of books broke out and created big careers for people. Still kind of continued out. Some of those things acquired that were coming out uh, in 2015, 2016, even up to 2017, but I, I'd say breakouts from 2016, 2017 are outliers because it had already really started saturating. Because when you have 150 to 200 debuts a year steadily every single year, and those are just based off of the debut groups, there might have been even more debuts, but that's one rough way to get numbers. That's a lot of new people coming into the market. That's a lot of books to market. And as we all know, publishing doesn't market all of those books. It's a lot of competition. And you can't just continue to publish 200 debut authors a year, continually, 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 and expect to nurture and keep those careers going. And in fairness, that's been a problem with YA for a while, that you can get your foot in the door, but can you sell another book? So concurrently, what has been happening? Sales have been going down steadily over the last five, six years, but I feel like it's gotten especially bad in the last three to four. Like if you actually look up book scan numbers, which aren't even the most accurate, but you can still kind of judge some trends. It's bad. Uh, it definitely used to be that if you couldn't sell 10,000 copies, you were considered a failure and that's considered a success now for many, many books. You're lucky to break, let's say 1K or 2K copies now, whereas that definitely was considered a failure uh, back when. Uh, the goalposts have shifted. YA sells less. The outliers still sell a ton, but the average book just doesn't sell much, which is the decimation of the mid list. I do have an entire video on that. I'm going to link to it down below where I go into detail that I don't want to detour too much here on. But essentially the mid list used to support publishing across the board. It's not just a YA concept. Uh, it's the steady sellers in the middle who regularly sell like 10 to say 40 to 50,000 copies and their careers build over time and they just steadily sell down the middle. Well, as YA started going more like, no, we want all the big books, they stopped supporting those books and lo and behold, they've just disappeared over time. And it is literally now, it's, it's like, it's like our economy. You are either in the 1% where you are a huge breakout book and you sell tens of thousands of copies, hundreds of thousands of copies, and you have it made in the shade and you're a YA success story, or you fight at the bottom for scraps. And most people are fighting at the bottom for scraps. Here's the thing. YA 
this is a natural progression, as I mentioned, young category. This was always going to happen eventually, but it's definitely been made worse by some of the attitudes and behaviors <laughs> of the Y industry. I also recommend you watch my Why Sci-Fi Doesn't Do Well in YA video because I talk about this mentality and how they approach acquisition and marketing and selling of books and why it inherently works against sci-fi. It's the same idea. It hurts a lot more genres than just sci-fi. It hurts a lot of books. It hurts historicals. It hurts quiet books. It hurts fantasies and contemporaries that are perfectly mainstream but like aren't gonna sell 100,000 copies. It hurts most books except for the biggest books. So the writing was on the wall and something had to give and the bubble had to burst and it's finally bursting basically except it's more like someone pricked it with a pin, the balloon, a couple of years ago and the air has just been letting out my list is mostly gone. Uh, what's definitely happening and people are finally noticing and talking about, uh, and I, I've been quietly watching and predicting this for a while, a lot of those authors who did sell during the boom, who got five, six, seven books, you know, kind of in their career, aren't selling more. They're not able to get further books contracts. That's part of the mid list disappearing. But even recent debuts, it's it's a higher stakes game now when you debut. Again, there's 150 to 200 of us a year. And it's I'm noticing specifically from 2018 debuts and up, obviously, the 2020s are still fresh, sticking their kids. Um, people who just aren't even getting a second book contract off of their debut contract, it is harder than it used to be. But also, this is the doom and gloom video, but you want the real deal about what's going on. Uh, they're acquiring fewer debuts. I suspect that was intentional. Like I've been noticing the trend for a while and I've talked about it a bit in some videos and I've definitely talked about it privately and I've definitely talked about it on Reddit. At least this is a pep talk that I give to the AMM mentees a lot. It's both true and also disconcerting. Um, that like, hey, like they really barely, for a while, they had barely acquired for 2021. And I was like, surely they have to acquire more books for 2021. We just haven't seen a lot of announcements. 2022, still not a lot. I've seen almost nothing for 2023. We still have time to start saying those, but it's weird. It's weird specifically until recently, asterisks. The 2021 and 2022 really didn't have many acquisitions or in volume as it used to be. And so I think that's a signal, a sign. Um, 2019 and 2020 were two of like the most stacked debut classes I had seen in a really, really long time. Especially, I mean, tw I thought 2018 was pretty stacked. Then 2019 was even bigger and more, and by stacked, I mean like big, buzzy books, a lot of like hot debuts acquired at the same time, all competing for oxygen at the same time. But 2021, isn't as aggressively competitive, which I think is a good thing for those books that are debuting because there's a little more space and a little more oxygen. And well, now sadly, we have these imprints shuttering. So that's really going to impact 2022 and 2023. There will literally be fewer spots for books and for debuts. And it it's, it's a short term suck. It's a short term suck because it means that there are people who are agented right now who uh, might have a tougher time selling and it's it's heartbreak but for those who do sell this is part of YA course correcting itself to be a healthier normal book category we're basically course correcting so we are like every other part of the book world <laughs> adult obviously adult just being books for a really long time again why is a very young category around for decades and decades and decades and decades. It's very normal for there not to be a million imprints for romance or sci-fi or regular novels. They don't stuff their lists full of dozens and dozens and dozens of debuts. They don't make their lists fight for marketing oxygen like the Hunger Games. YA very uniquely basically saturated itself and uh, honestly, we got too big too fast? Too big to fail? Not really? And that's the thing, uh, YA is not dying. It, it, YA is dying, but it's not dying. YA is not going away. YA is shifting and changing as it has to shift and change because we pushed ourselves to a breaking point and we haven't had a big breakout 
definitely not a mainstream crossover hit in a long ass time. And it was those mainstream big crossover hits, the ones that made YA hot, that basically had publishing executives bathing themselves in money. And that's not happening anymore. We haven't managed to create that kind of breakout success in a really long time. And like, we haven't had a trend, like a, a, a definitive trend, like paranormal followed by dystopian. We haven't had one of those in five, six, seven years. What is next in YA? No one knows. So I take this as partly positive. This is the pep talky part, because no one knows what the heck is the next thing. I'm actually seeing publishing being slightly adventurous in some of their acquisitions. Now alongside this, uh, it's also a separate conversation I think I brought up in the Midlister video because we're not going to detour into money for too long, but advances have also been steadily declining <laughs> over many years as part of the YA boom, the YA bubble slowly letting out air. It's good and it's bad. It's sucky that you're not going to get your huge splashy six-figure deal, but it's great because your weird little book that publishing now is like, you know, we might take a chance on this because we don't know what's next, but this feels different. They might only pay you $20,000, but you have a shot. I actually am hopeful because maybe that next big thing, it's out there, and I hope publishing is gonna take the chances to actually acquire those things. Well, I hope they learn their lesson that you can't just buy every book in existence and try to force hundreds and hundreds of books to compete with each other, Hunger Games style, but also publish the same type of book over and over and over again because you're desperately chasing a past success. It's a horrible model. They'll never stop completely, but I hope that this weird shift forces everyone to just kind of both kind of expand what they're acquiring, but also narrow their focus better. Really focus on tight, well-written books that serve both sides of the market, because there's this whole other thing. The other thing why it did to itself, which I think contributes to this, is we push so much to the adult side of the market, the upper YA side of the market, that we got rid of lower YA, which I think also impacts uh, the category and sales. I think YA just needs to be more healthy about publishing a breadth of books. That's what it really needs to do, in my humble opinion. So the point is, things are changing. It sucks. It's more stressful. It's harder to get published in the first place now, and it's harder to stay published once you are published. It is, I guess, a different kind of Hunger Games, as long as we're using that metaphor. Like, it's always been hard. It's just like the, the screws have tightened in slightly different ways. Here's the shift that everyone has to make when it comes to YA. YA is no longer an easy route to publishing. This was a horrible kind of idea that developed and also sadly for a time was definitely true. People would be like, I wanna be published, I'll write YA. YA is easier, it's easier to break in. They throw six figures at books all the time and like, they, oh, boom. when something's booming, yeah, of course. And admittedly, yes, it was easier for a time. That is no longer the case. YA is just like every other part of publishing. It's all hard. And so in a good way, I'm hoping this weeds out the lowest common denominator writers who thought YA was easy and that they could vomit out a, a stupid book and make a ton of money off it. And some of them did get rewarded for that mentality, which makes me very, very mad. But that's the thing. YA is for the hardcore real dealers. I don't think you should give up on YA. If you love YA, if you eat, sleep, and breathe YA. You read a ton of YA. It is your love. It really suits your voice and your writing style and the stories that you want to tell and you work hard at it. Keep doing that because those are the people who will make it in YA, who will survive in YA. The category is tightening, but it doesn't mean it's going away. It will survive and every single year YA needs new, fresh voices and writers. They're publishing fewer debuts, but fewer from 200 is not that bad. I suspect that we'll see debut classes that sit more in the area of 120, 30 to 150. I hope they don't edge closer to 200. And also in fairness, a lot of that trimming 
is also coming from a lot of the smaller publishers are definitely going to fold. I said that in the COVID video. I stand by that. There are a lot of smaller publishers who tried to get into the YA game, and there have been rumblings pre-COVID of many of them just not being very good. <laughs> and so I think a lot of those will go away. And again, that is going to suck for a lot of people. But I mean, this is capitalism. This is how businesses work. So yeah, I think things are going to continue to shift and tighten and change. But I don't, if you love YA, I don't think you should give up on it. This just means you have to be very, very serious about it all. You have to stay on top of reading. You have to stay on top of the market as much as possible. You have to stay on top of your own craft. I do think we're going to see less and less of someone being able to vomit at a book, maybe edit it once, land a huge agent and get a huge six figure book deal and their book comes out the next year. It's always going to happen sometimes, but meaning it's never a bad thing to work on bringing your A game in your writing work on your craft. It, it's a gut punch every single time that you write a book and it doesn't work out because it's harder to get an agent now and so on and so on. Tackle those revisions, write a new book, narrow in on what isn't working, keep going. Now, in some cases, this is, this is the other thing. I have been it quietly, but still publicly, like in videos and on Reddit, advising, and mentees actually, advising anyone who, if you aren't 100% YA all the time, if you even have an inkling, an inclination toward anything else, middle grade, adult, it's not a bad idea to explore those other areas. So that's the thing. If your heart and soul isn't in YA, or if you could certainly explore something else and it would be just as fun and challenging, and interesting for you, I'm also seeing plenty of people, both debuts and authors who have already had a debut, Finding success in other areas, in parts of publishing that have been more mature for a very long time and are in some ways easier to publish in because they didn't saturate themselves to heck. So this could be a good opportunity for many people to push themselves further out of YA, especially because so many of us, I mean, if you're writing, I hope you're an adult. We are adults. Try reading outside of YA. You might be surprised, especially when it comes to like sci-fi, fantasy, romance. You'd be amazed what premises you have don't always have to be YA. You could actually write somewhere else. I don't think YA tightening is a death knell for all writers. It just means that a boom wonderful time is over. It's been over for a while. It's just people haven't noticed till now because now we're really getting the clear big signals like imprint shutting down. So what should you expect going forward? As I already mentioned, I think debut acquisitions are going to continue to decline. But the interesting thing about 2021 is COVID did actually shift a lot of things. They had to move a ton of books, but also because I think they had, well, of course they had expected a normal acquisition season in the spring of 2020, and then that didn't happen. I have actually seen a lot of acquisitions over the summer and fall that books that are now being crashed into 2021. And that's the thing. Just always remind yourself, publishing still is to publish books. YA is not going away. But I do, I generally think we're going to see smaller debut classes. But I also think genuinely we'll see better experiences for more debuts because this should mean there's more oxygen across the board for sales, marketing, publicity, etc. Because honestly, all of these imprints, they were overtasked. You know, these poor marketing, sales, and publicity people, editors as well, but I, especially like you'll have six editors, but then all the work is dumped on three publicists. You know what I mean? Who were asked to work on an insane number of books. And it is true that they had to make tough decisions with oxygen. So I think this could potentially be better for a lot of people. It sucks in the short term, of course. And then just the other thing to expect just realistically. So imprint shutting, publishers selling, HMH is up for sale now as well. There's going to be more consolidation. This is just the beginning. So it is a little scary. Um, and I won't diminish those feelings. If you have an agent, like batten down the hatches with your agent, talk strategy, have a long term plan. Because it can be possible that if your publisher is sold or your imprint is shuttered, consolidation basically means either editors are let go or they're moved to other teams. And like, you usually are fine in the short term, but it can mean then 
they're acquiring less going forward. I think we are gonna see that. So for example, Simon & Schuster or HMH, if they sold to another publisher, for example, there would definitely be consolidation like what we saw with the Penguin Random House merger. But it also just depends. A publisher can sell to a company that isn't already in the publishing business and they might not consolidate much at all. It really, really varies. The other thing that's also already been happening and I think people might notice more going forward, but it's been happening for a while and I have an entire video on it as well. You should watch my primer on IP or licensed content, which is intellectual property, where authors are hired to write someone else's intellectual property or idea. This has already been happening for a long time and you know the properties like Marvel or Star Wars, but also quietly at a lot of your favorite publishers, Harper, Simon & Schuster, Scholastic, there are more, I know some of them. A lot of the books that you see sell were actually IP, where the publisher that, you know, brainstormed an idea in an editorial meeting, and then the editor reached out to agents to hire an author to develop and write it. And so what's happening more and more, that is a survival mechanism, honestly, both for debuts and for existing authors. I think you're going to see more situations where it's honestly prudent and smart. If you're not able to sell your debut, the book you wrote and signed with your agent on, IP opportunities can be a great way to get published. Same thing if you've already sold a book but you're struggling to get your option sold, open yourself up to IP opportunities. A ton of pro authors, like the ones who write full time, that is how they survive alongside their original fiction. Though the thing is so much work goes into IP that it's, I, I feel that it belongs to the authors as well. I could rant long about people who look down on IP. I'm not a fan. I'm like, a lot of work goes into IP. And in fact, the ones where the publisher hires you, they want you to make that idea yours and it does become yours as you work on it. And that's the thing, a ton of authors are doing this already because it's one of the best ways to survive in the industry. You're a good writer, you're a workhorse writer, you're easy to work with, you get those jobs. And then just kind of my final point of what to expect or the hope that I'm going to leave you with, that's what I'm gonna call it. As I mentioned, YA still has to publish books, YA still has to publish debuts, why are you still going to chase breakouts and fresh ideas? They're not really going to change, even though I wish they would, you know, be a little nicer to niche books, quiet books, historical sci-fi, and give them a little more love and oxygen. But the reality is, of course they want more breakouts because breakouts make a lot of money and it could be you. And I want you to hold on to that hope. Like, work on your book channel your love into your book, make it shiny and gorgeous and write a great query and query agents, both new and hungry, but also some of those A-list or dream agents. You don't know what's gonna happen. And I think it's always worth trying because it could be you, because it has to be someone. Because YA is not going away. It is dying. It's diminishing, it's changing. It's not really dying. It's not going to die. YA will not be dead, but it is transitioning to a new phase of life. And it is scary and it is weird, but I mean, I'm here for you. Like, seriously, I have been trying to warn you for years and so many of the videos I make are to help you get through this. It is harder than ever to get your foot in the door of YA publishing, but it is 100% doable and possible. So don't give up, basically, is what I'm saying. Unless you want to try something else, in which case, seriously, you get my full support. Do not torture yourself trying to pursue YA if it's not working for you. So, okay, this was a doozy. This is a big one. But I hope this was interesting. I hope it answered any questions you have, alleviated fears that you had, and let me know down below in the comments. How are you feeling? What are your questions? Are there things you've noticed that I didn't talk about? Just inhale, exhale, deep breath. I know it's weird. Privately, so many of us have been talking about this for a while. We continue to talk about it. Like when we see that an imprint is shutting, we're in the, you know, DMs and we're like, and we're checking in on our friends who are with those imprints and we're making sure everyone is okay. It's big and it's scary, but it's gonna be okay. And give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I will make more discussion style videos about the industry and the state of things. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and happy writing.